obviously the people that are here love the game, love the game of poker, you know, and they want to improve. They're all here, you know, chasing the dream, like just like I did when I started playing poker 15 years ago. You have umpteen world-class players here who are sharing their knowledge with you. you know, how to play hands well, which hands to play, things to pay attention to. Your ideal move is you want to check it to him and give him enough rope to hang himself. By you leading out, you're not giving him enough rope to hang himself. You're practically telling you you're him. You're committed to this hand. Mostly we try and teach them that poker is a game of information. It's important for you to understand how the brain works and why we do the things that we do. And I think once you understand that, it'll make it a lot easier at the poker tables to play poker. You know, we got all these great minds and we don't always think alike. How can you not walk away with you know, bits of information that you didn't have before. Or you can come to a camp like this and you can learn from the best players and we'll teach you the things that we've learned over all that time and help you accelerate your progress to get into that main event. The beauty of nonverbals is we always will be transmitting information. I often hear, oh, you have a poker face. It's impossible to have a poker body. Yeah, you can have a poker face but it will show somewhere else. And most players concentrate on the face and they ignore what their hands are doing. They ignore what their bodies are doing. They ignore what their feet are doing. I love teaching. I've always been a teacher. Like I used to tutor when I was at uni. I love that interaction with people. I love the look on people's faces when they get it. Absolutely. You, that's what you've got. You've got to break the hand down. If at the, at the end of breaking it down, it doesn't make sense, then something is wrong. Either he's so tricky that you can't get a read on him, yeah, or he's bluffing. I have always enjoyed teaching people anything. Um, when I was in college, everyone would come to me for help with their homework. So now he's putting 400 to win 225. It, you know, is he going to win this pot right now two-thirds of the time or better? Because that's what he's got to do to make a profit. As poker players, when we talk about hands together, that helps us understand the game better. So imagine what it does to someone who's just learning how to play. He's actually taking control of the pot, being out of position, which is hard to do. We help them learn how to gather the information more successfully and how to process the information more accurately so that they can make a more perfect decision on each hand that they play. What's your check raise going to be? How much? Uh, yesterday, I'm watching a player. I know he's got a monster hand, and I know this because his uh, bot is actually levitating. <laughs> and in the FBI, we call that a clue. And he's playing against players that are just looking at his face. What we're actually doing at the moment, in the background that you can see, is we're playing hands with the, with the participants and then dissecting the hands for them so they understand our analysis. You want to find out information because you can use that information later on. Right now, you, you found out nothing. There's a gentleman here, and I knew he had a strong hand. And when it was over, he said, well, how did you know? And I said, because most of the time, you sit slump. And then in this hand, you were sitting up. It's still a question of who's at your table, judging their style, and then reacting to that so that you can make the best decisions on your hands. How is everybody else affected? Is he comfortable or uncomfortable? Comfortable or uncomfortable? How are they affected by that? I think our campers are getting a good deal. I think most of them will make money as a result of coming to this camp. After walking out of here, you're going to be pumped. You know, you know, you're going to think, yes, at least now I have tools that will help me in the main event and give me a better chance. Mark Safe got knocked out of a tournament earlier by someone who uh, was one of our campers in our first World Series of Poker Academy in Tunica. And uh, Mark said he had raised under the gun with Ace-King, and this guy re-raised with Ace-10, and Mark called, and, and, and he caught a 10 and knocked Mark out, and he said to Mark, I learned it from you. If I end up facing one of these guys during the main event, and they take me out, good luck, and that's poker.